Hey STAT students, how you doing? Today we're going to have another video on linear regression. This video is going to be very mathy, okay? Because we're talking about the math behind linear regression, all right? Now, there were four things that I left unproven to you before. These are our burning questions. Number one, this is actually two videos ago that I mentioned this. I said, I said that uh, R had to be between negative one and one. How do we know that? We're going to find out today. I also want to know, how do I know that the least squared regression line goes to the point x bar, y bar? That is the mean of x, mean of y. Again, we're going to prove that today. I also want to know, how do I know that the slope of the least squared regression line, y hat equals ax plus b, is a equals r times sy over sx? That is to say, the correlation co coefficient divided, or times uh, the ratio of the standard deviation of y divided by standard deviation of x. All right? Basically, two and three are kind of the same question, and that, that's what that's asking is, how can I find the formula for the least squared regression line, okay? And then finally, question number four, how do I know that the ratio of the variance of the uh, residuals to the variance of my y data, how do I know that that's one minus r squared? I just stated it in the last video, but I didn't prove it. Today we prove it, okay? So, let's start. We have questions one, two, three, four. So naturally, let's start with number two. Um, it's not naturally, but that's what we're going to start with. I want to know, how do I know that the least squared regression line goes to the point x bar, y bar? Okay? Well, first off, let's remember what the least squared regression line is. It's this line, y hat equals ax plus b. I know that the AP, uh, the, 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 the AP says b naught plus b1 times x. That's all fine and good, okay? Those are just two, two different names that we're using for slope and, uh, and y-intercept. I want to use a for slope and b for y-intercept, so please just humor me during this video, okay? So, it's this, uh, this, this line, y hat equals ax plus b, that minimizes this. It minimizes the sum of the squared residuals. Let's remember what residuals are, okay? Here's our point. This is our actual observed point right there, x x sub i, y sub i, okay? And the point directly below it, or perhaps directly above it, on my least squared regression line is the point x sub i, y hat i. So basically, what y hat is, it's, it's, the, it's the predicted value of y, whereas this is the actual observed value of y, okay? So observed minus predicted, that's what your residual is. So that distance is the residual. It's, it's like the error. It's how much we, we missed by. And what I want is, I want the line where the sum of the squared residuals is as small as possible. That makes sense. I want this to be as small as possible. I want to, I want to miss as little as possible. I want my misses to be small. And so that's what this line does. Okay, so, uh, one more thing that I want to mention, and that is this whole idea of minimization. We're going to find ourselves with a quadratic equation. Let's remember how to minimize a quadratic equation. Looks like a parabola, and the minimum is right down there at the vertex, okay? If my quadratic equation has the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, the vertex has the x-coordinate of negative b over 2a. This is something we should have covered in Algebra 2. If not, well, you should have, okay? Uh, but uh, um, there's also a y coordinate to that vertex. I don't care what that is. What I really care about is what's the x coordinate. What do I have to plug into x to make y as small as possible? Okay. And what we see is negative b over 2a. And what that means is negative middle coefficient divided by 2 times first coefficient. I'm using a and b to mean something else, so don't get too hung up on the letters a and b. This means negative middle coefficient divided by two times first coefficient, okay? So let's, uh, let's get beyond that. And, then, and uh, so what do we have here? We have yi minus y hat i. I said that y hat i was ax plus, ax i plus b, so let's just make that substitution there. And then after we make that substitution, we can just distribute that minus, and we get the sum of all yi minus ax i minus b squared, right? And uh, that's going to be, let me get this out of the way, that's going to be, uh, uh, oh, and all I'm doing right here is I'm now kind of regrouping this and saying, let me put these two things together, okay? So this is the sum of 
yi minus axi minus b, and that whole thing squared. All right, let's throw that up to the top there. And uh, this is going to equal, well, now all I'm doing is I'm just multiplying this out. Remember how to multiply? Remember how to expand a binomial, a squared binomial? Okay, it's this thing squared um, plus two times this times this plus this thing squared. So here we have the first term squared minus, because this is negative, minus two times first term times second term plus second term squared, all right? Again, this is, this is actually algebra one. We should remember that. And, uh, okay, now, now what we're doing is I have the sum of a sum, okay? If you're summing up a bunch of terms, you can sum them up in whatever order you want to. Okay, that's our commutative law of, of addition. So what, instead of saying, I'm gonna take the sum of all my points, this minus this plus this, what I'm doing is I'm saying, let me sum up all of these first, okay? Then I'm gonna subtract two times the sum of all of these, times b. Then I'm gonna add the sum of all of these, okay? So I'm just splitting this one sum into three different sums, okay? And now, this of course is, uh, this stays the same. Uh, here, two, I can factor out a two from this and I can put it in front of the sum. As a matter of fact, I can do the same thing with this b. I can say two times this sum times b because b is not dependent on the, on the particular point. And right here, look at what this is doing. This is summing up this number n times. So b squared plus b squared plus b squared n times. That's just n times b squared. Okay, so we can just re rename that n times b squared. Okay, so let's, uh, let's take this and let's put it up to the top there. Uh, and uh, I'm going to reorder my terms. And when I reorder my terms, I put these b's in green here because what you should see now is this is a quadratic function of b. Okay, this is a quadratic function of b. Right, so I can call this function of b where I have, here's my first coefficient times b squared, here's my second coefficient times b, and here's my third, all right? Well, when is this thing minimized? It's minimized when b equals negative this coefficient divided by two times this coefficient, okay? So it's gonna be negative, negative two times this sum, divided by two times n, that coefficient. All right, and uh, so let's just uh, throw that up there. And of course, uh, we, can, uh, uh, we can factor out the negatives, we can factor out the twos, and this is going to equal one over n times the sum of uh, this yi minus axi. And again, we can split up this sum to be two different sums. This is one over n, times the sum of all my y i of all my y's minus one over n times a times the sum of all my x's. And isn't this just the mean of your y's? If you sum them all up and you divide by the number that you have, that's just the mean of your y's. And one over n times the sum of all my x's, that's just the mean of all my x's. And so what I have here is the mean of my y's minus a times the mean of my x's. So that's what my b is, that's what my, uh, um, what my y-intercept is. It's going to be y-bar minus a x-bar. And I can actually rewrite this to be y-hat equals a times x minus x-bar plus y-bar. And you probably recognize that as the point-slope formula of uh, a line that goes through the point x-bar, y-bar. And we have now proven that your least squared regression line must go through the point x bar y bar one down okay so now let's look at the question how do i know that the slope of the least squared re regression line y hat equals uh correlation coefficient times the ratio of the standard deviations all right let's just jump right into it again here's a uh Okay, again, the least squared regression line is trying to minimize uh, this, this right here, the, the, uh, 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 
the, the squared residuals. I'm sorry, I blanked out for a second. There's my residual, there's, I'm squaring it, I'm summing them all up, so it's minimizing the sum of the squared residuals. And uh, so let's, let's uh, uh, now rename y hat uh, what we said it is. It's going to be a times x minus x bar plus y bar. Remember, we're writing our linear equation in the point slope, point slope form. And uh, let's get rid of those brackets. Let's go ahead and uh, 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 distribute that minus there. So it's going to get us yi minus a times xi minus x bar minus y bar. And toss it up to the top there. And that's going to equal, let me just group my yi minus y bar together minus a times xi minus x bar. And now I have one thing minus another thing squared. So I can expand that to be, again, we're just taking our binomial squared and expanding it. That's yi minus y, minus y bar squared, minus two times first term times second term, plus second term squared. And now what is that going to be? Hmm. Well, I'm just reordering again. I'm taking this last one, putting it first. I'm also splitting apart the sums like we did last time. And what I get is this sum times a squared, minus two times this sum times a, plus this sum. And again, you can see that this is going to be a, uh, a, uh, a quadratic equation. There's my a squared, there's my a. So that means this is going to be, I'll throw it up there, it's gonna be minimized when a equals, this looks really messy, but it's gonna be okay. When a equals negative middle coefficient, that's right there, divided by two times first coefficient. That's that thing right there. Now, like I said, this looks really messy, but let's, uh, let's, let's, let's see if we can simplify it somehow. And uh, the first thing I wanna do to simplify it uh, is, hey, where is it? Okay, oh, I'm sorry. First thing we can do is we can cancel out our negatives, cancel out our twos, and so we just get this sum divided by this sum. And now, I want to remember, what is r? r is 1 over n minus 1 times the sum of the product of our z-scores, right? Remember what z-scores are? xi minus x bar over, over, square, over standard deviation of x times y i minus y bar over standard deviation of y. Each one of these is a z-score. Now, the standard deviation, that's not specific to a particular point, so that means I can just factor these out and I can say this is 1 over n minus 1 times sx times sy in my denominator here times the sum of xi minus x bar times yi minus y bar and you know something this looks a lot like what I have right up there okay so that means this sum here which is what I'm writing right here this sum here equals r times my denominator r times sx times sy times n minus 1 so what that means is this sum right there, I can write that as r times sx times sy times n minus 1, okay? Uh, one more thing I want to uh, point out, and that is the variance of x. It's 1 over n minus 1 times uh, x minus x bar, x, x minus the mean of x squared and the sum over all, over all my x's. Well, that's, that's what that is, okay? By the way, there should be a little index i there. That's exactly what that is, and so that means that this can be rewritten as sx squared times n minus 1. So let's do that. And now, what do we have? Uh, this is just my sx. This can, can cancel out with this with one of these sx's. The n minus 1's can cancel out. And what I have is r times sy over sx, and that's exactly what we were trying to prove. Okay? So my a, okay? The, uh, uh, the, the slope of the least squared regression line is just the correlation coefficient divided by the ratio of the standard deviations. Okay, two down, time for, uh, oh, and this is just a summary of what that's saying. The line that minimizes this, the line y hat, is the line y hat equals ax plus b, where a is this and B is this. That's a really good thing to know. 
It is also written on your formula chart that you can have for the AP test, so don't worry about memorizing it. Know it, but don't memorize it, okay? Uh, now, next question, and that is, how do I know that the ratio of the variance of the residuals divided by the variance of my y data is 1 minus r squared? This is surprisingly easy. We did most of the work on this last thing, okay? Here's what the, uh, uh, here's what the variance of the residuals looks like. It's 1 over n minus 1 times the sum of yi minus y hat i squared, okay? And if you remember, we already did what this is last time. We said uh, this sum, yi minus y hat squared, we expanded it last time to be this big old monster. You can hit, your, hit rewind on the video and prove it to yourself. And so uh, let's put that up to the top there. Um, so that's going to be, we can rename a lot of these things. This thing here, if you remember, this is just a uh, variance of x times n minus 1. This, we said that a was r times sy over sx, so I can rename that to be this thing squared. Uh, we said that this particular sum was just r times sx sy times n minus 1. Again, we did all this a couple of minutes ago. Uh, we also said that a was r times sy over sx, and we also said that the, uh, the sum of yi minus y bar squared was just the variance times s minus 1, so I can rename all those things. And now, uh, oh, so now what we can do is I have sx squared here and I have sx squared there, those cancel out. I've got an sx here and an sx there, those cancel out. And so if I cancel out all my sx's, what I end up with is n minus 1 times r squared sy squared minus 2 times n minus 1 r squared sy squared plus sy squared times n minus 1. And you'll notice there's a whole lot of n minus 1s and sy squareds going on there. So we can factor those out and we end up with r squared minus 2r squared plus 1. I think r squared minus 2r squared is just negative r squared. So I can rewrite that again to be n minus 1 times s squared, uh, sy squared times 1 minus r squared. All of this is to say that this equals this. So let's throw that up there. And uh, I'm not sure where that came from. Uh, so now I'm going to say that the, uh, the variance of my residuals, which is defined to be this, is just going to be, uh, I can now rewrite this sum to be that. It's going to be 1 over n minus 1 times n minus 1 uh, uh, times the variance of my y's times 1 minus r. Naturally, these cancel out, and I get uh, the variance of my y's times 1 minus, n mi 1 minus r squared. And so what that means is this divided by sy squared is just going to be 1 minus r squared, and we did it. Okay? We just showed that the ratio of the, uh, the variance of my residuals divided by the variance of my y data is 1 minus r squared, which is going to turn out to be very, very uh, uh, important. Okay, so last question, which is actually the first question. Uh, that says, how do I know that r is between negative 1 and 1? The last proof we just did actually proves this as well. We just said that the, uh, the ratio of these variances is 1 minus r squared which of course means that this plus r squared equals 1, right? Variances are always positive, so that means that the smallest this can be is 0. Naturally, this is squared, the smallest that can be is 0. And if I have positive number plus positive number equals 1, that tells me that both of these things, the smallest that can be is 0 and the biggest that can be is 1. And if the biggest thing that, uh, if r squared has to be less than 1, that means r has to be somewhere between negative 1 and 1, and we're done, okay? So, what have we proven today? We proved that the least squared regression line is the line y hat equals ax plus b, where a is this and b is this. We proved that the ratio of the variance of my residuals divided by variance of my y is 1 minus r squared, and we also proved that r squared has to be between 0 and 1, 
meaning that R has to be between negative 1 and 1. All right. That's the math, okay? This is the mathiest video that we're going to have this year. So if this kind of freaked you out, you just chill out a little bit. It's not that bad, okay? Uh, you will probably not have to recreate this, but I just want you to see all these proofs so that you can know for a fact that these statements that we've made are true and not just something that somebody came up with once, okay? Next video is also going to be on linear regression. Uh, linear regression is very, very meaty, and so there's going to be more things we have to talk about, and we'll talk about it then. Bye-bye.